Hello lovely people. Welcome to Time with Auntie Midwife. Beloved Midwife, Kenneth. Hi. <laughs> How are you all? If you would ask me, I am very fine, thank you as usual. Fast forward. In our previous discussion, we began with a the male reproductive system. For more details, kindly visit our previous episodes to get yourself updated. Today, we will begin our discussion into the external reproductive organs of the male reproductive system. And the first organ for discussion is the male penis. The male penis. I love the male penis a lot why because it rhymes with my name Kenneth Penis Kenneth Penis I got you there what were you thinking about I presume it's a bad thought <laughs> yes the male penis for you to learn and to as well have fun kindly subscribe to my channel be part of the family like and share the videos in as much as you are sharing the videos share your comments as well so that we all learn together yay the male penis hangs flaccidly suspended between the ties hanging downwards in front of the scrotal sac it is expanded at the distal end to form to form an acorn shaped structure and this acorn shaped structure is the glans penis so from the image you can tell that the glans penis looks exactly as the acorn <laughs> The shaft of the penis contains three columns of erectile tissue, the two dorsolateral corpora cavernosa and smaller ventral corpus spongiosum containing the urethra. The skin covering the glans penis is doubled back on itself to form the prepuce or the foreskin, with the exception of young infant they do not have the prepuce or the foreskin why because the prepuce is still attached to the glands it is this fold of skin which is removed during the operation of circumcision <laughs> this is a typical uncircumcised penis as you can see the prepuce or the foreskin is still attached to the glands once it is circumcised then the skin then falls back on itself or it doubles back on itself then your prepuce or the first skin becomes visible the penis transmits a portion of the urethra which acts as a passage for semen as well as for excretion of urine One will ask, how is it possible that in the passage of semen, urine is not excreted? Oh, that is a great question. <laughs> this is the answer. There is a small sphincter that prevents semen from entering the bladder and the simultaneous passage of sperm and urine. So as you can see from the diagram, we have the internal sphincter with a black dot and the external sphincter with a green dot. Erection of the penis is essential if sexual intercourse is to take place and occurs only in response to sexual arousal. Inasmuch as with sexual intercourse, you would need sexual arousal for your penis to erect. As a normal male, your penis is supposed to erect at least 15 times within the day and 5 times during the night. So if you are unable to experience this normal phenomenon, please visit the nearby health facility for examination, diagnosis, and management. Do not self-medicate. Thank you. 
the blood vessels which they contain become widely dilated and rapidly engorged with blood when in response to arousal. Autonomic nerves stimulate their smooth muzzle walls. As the cavernosal spaces fill with blood, the penis becomes hard, stands erect and points forward, ready for action. So if your penis isn't able to erect to this degree, you may also want to visit the health facility for examination. During this physiology, during this normal physiology, we must make sure that the boys in the family, if you are a parent, your children, if you are a sister, your brother, the boy should be informed before the onset of puberty that such erections are likely to occur as a result of excitement, sexual or otherwise. Otherwise, we may mean the normal physiology. It will be erected at any time. And so, they shouldn't be bothered. They shouldn't be bothered at all. They should also be told that When they begin to produce sperm, wet dreams, also known as nocturnal emissions, are liable to occur as a result of erotic dreams. If you are dreaming of kissing a lady, if you are dreaming of touching a woman, if you are dreaming of just doing anything erotic, please, wet dreams are normal. Do not be sad. Do not be sad. So for us to be able to get them cooperating, we need to help them understand that these physiologies are normal. To end today's lesson, we must know that according to Thames analysis, the average flaccid pendulous penis is 9.16 centimeters or 3.61 inches in length and the average erect penis is 13.12 cm or 5.16 inches long. The corresponding girth measurements are 9.31 cm or 3.66 inches for a flaccid penis and 11.66 cm or 4.59 inches for an erect one and so if your penis is not up to at least at least 5.16 inches long when erect kindly visit the nearby health facility penal enlargement is not the right thing to do no if you do that you will be worrying your own structure and at the end you will face its consequences this is all you need to know about the penis thank you very much for your valuable time thank you very much for your love thank you very much for everything you do to support my channel we shall meet again bear in mind that it is your life it's your choice Thank you all. I love you all so much. Bye. Watch out for the next episode. Mwah.